What's up everyone, welcome to Best Car Reviews, I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe. In your Best Car Reviews, I try to bring the most accurate and relevant information under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no waste of time. If that's something that's intriguing to you and you enjoy the content as you watch, please like and subscribe so I continue to grow the channel. Let's get started. The Santa Fe, we're all familiar with it and the one that we picture in our brains is certainly an outdated, old, and ready to be renewed model in Hyundai has delivered for 2024 they have now revealed this stunning completely unrecognizable santa fe if you saw this on the street and somebody said what kind of car is this there's no way you would say a hyundai santa fe uh, they've really done a phenomenal job and if you're loving the design stay tuned because they were going to go through the trims key details that matter most to you to determine which will be the best bang for your buck all photos and information in today's video come direct from hyundai and some from car and driver let's dive in it's looking like five different trim levels will be available to you of the Santa Fe in 2024. SE, SEL, XRT Limited, and Calligraphy. These prices are not for certain, so we're estimating here, and this is based off what others are saying. I think they're going to be a little higher than what people are saying, so looking at that base SE, I'm going to guess will be around 35000 working all the way up to the Calligraphy at fifty, And this, of course, will depend on other factors. Um, and what Hyundai ultimately decides they want to do, but this is probably roughly what you can expect. Engine options for these trims. You'll have either a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four, 277 horsepower, 311 pound-feet of torque, or you can go hybrid with a 1.6 liter turbocharged four-cylinder plus one electric motor, giving you 226 horsepower, 195 pound-feet of torque. So not a lot of power there on the hybrid, but it is a hybrid, so that is a benefit to many. Transmission, the gas will have a dual-clutch 8-speed auto, where the hybrid will have a 6-speed auto. Drivetrain gas will come standard with front-wheel drive, but you can option that all-wheel drive. Hybrid will be all-wheel drive. And MPGs, uh, we have the gas numbers. It's going to be roughly 25 city, 28 highway. Hybrid is not available yet, but we will know that soon. Let's take a look at the pictures release of this 2024 Santa Fe while we go through the main features. This is the fifth generation and a larger and significantly more stylish Santa Fe for you. It grows in length and width. Easy, Michael Scott. This thing is rugged in appearance, and I instantly love the look of the wraparound windows. The tint looks perfect, and it makes it appear two-toned. It's very well done. There are so many straight lines and 90-degree edges on these, but it works so well, and I really think it's like something I didn't know could exist and not look bad at the same time, if that makes any sense. The side profile resembles a much more expensive vehicle, even a big like you know, Land Rover or Range Rover. Uh, the body lines are so well done, and all the subtle details really make this an attractive vehicle. Very unique LED daytime running lights on these. Certainly look like an H to me. H for Hyundai. Um, they must have done that intentionally, but if not, either way, they look sharp. If you're wondering why the taillights look so familiar, you're probably picturing Hyundai's Ionic models. So they copied themselves and not a rival company, so don't worry about that. Earthy brass is the color they're showing off the most here, and I think it fits it to a T. Definitely branding this in a way that encourages going on adventures and venturing off-road, in moderation of course. I don't see this Santa Fe scaling any rock faces. The XRT concept will cater to your off-roading needs, and Hyundai has previewed this trim with GoPro mounts, a ladder to access items on the roof racks, BF Goodrich all-terrain tires, and seemingly a stock lift. I've said it numerous times in my videos, but there is isn't there is an off-road craze right now, and I think Hyundai would be smart to offer this. An off-roading Santa Fe, who would have thought? There's going to be available 21-inch wheels, and the wheel designs we're seeing look sharp and unique enough to have my approval. I'm a stickler with wheels, but I like what I'm seeing. Hyundai is saying sales will open the first half of 2024. The best bang for your buck is very difficult to determine as things stand uh, um, as no, with no official pricing, hybrid EPA numbers, or standard features for the trims, amongst other things. But I'm going to predict for you guys that the SEL will be the sweet spot. Seeing as the XRT will be an off-road focused, and the next option after that will be the Limited, the SEL may deliver the most for your money for what people generally need. I can imagine Hyundai having the SE lacking in some regards like screen skies and materials to try to push people to opt towards the SEL or higher. Let's look now at the interior pictures released of this Santa Fe. We'll go through those features. Hyundai has designed you a beautiful interior to match their new exterior, and I'm digging everything about it. Third row availability is back, and even with the third row up, you get 26 cubic feet of storage behind that, which is exceptional. That's more than some three-row SUVs, like the big ones, um, like the Palisade. 
Plenty of storage, like I just said, probably due to the tall roof, and especially with the seats down, there's lots of room for items or to stretch out. So if you put all those seats down, you're gonna get you know, more than enough room uh, for your needs. And there's also cubbies stashed um, on your door panels for extra storage spots. The front seats offer relaxation mode with an extendable leg rest. The white makes me nervous. I think I would need a change of clothes each time I got into this. Um, you get some major screenage in the Santa Fe, and I love the look and functionality of it. A 12.3 inch fully digital driver gauge cluster accompanies another 12.3 inch infotainment touchscreen, and these screens take up more than half the dash, which I think is a pretty cool look. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are expected to be standard. You get two wireless chargers in your center console, and there's USB-C ports everywhere. This also gets a dedicated SOS button for 24-7, 365 emergency service should you need it. Aside from that, the Santa Fe will be bringing you a major bundle of standard driver's assist, safety, and technology features. Overall, besides my fear of the white materials, I think this interior is stellar. I love the design, I love the uniqueness, and for the price points, I think the amenities are exactly what they need to be. Interview guys, if you're in the market for a vehicle like this, you got a lot of options out there. Maybe you're looking at the CRV or the RAV4, maybe the Nissan Rogue, maybe even the Subaru Forester. All of those have a lot of features that you would want to cross reference with this, especially once those final details come out. Uh, there could be a lot of similarities, and at that point, it would really come down to which design you prefer, which I think looking across the board is going to be hard to beat this new Santa Fe. Um, really, nothing else on the road like it. Uh, and I think that's a huge selling point for these to separate itself from all the other kind of cookie cutter SUVs that are on the road. So once more details come out, stay tuned to those. We'll know a lot more about it, get official prices, and it'll be a lot easier to gauge if this is the compact crossover SUV for you. Uh, thank you for watching this best car review. Hopefully all information was laid on clear way for you guys. Uh, if you have an idea for a future review, drop in the comments and we'll see what I can do. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, we have that option now. Check those out and join if you'd like, and I'll catch you on the next Best Car Review.